In this short video, I'll talk about some considerations regarding tap changers. And I'm not going to go through like how the tap changer changes turns or anything. You know, that can be a separate topic. But I just want to kind of point out a few important things, you know, differences and so on and so forth, or things to consider. So transformer voltage can be increased or decreased by tapping in or out turns. Because again, if we go back to the formula, you know, if you take the secondary voltage, for instance, is number of turns in the secondary divided by number of turns in the primary times the primary voltage. So you can change taps, you know, basically adding turns or removing turns from the circuit uh, to change the voltage, basically. So that's why tap changes are used. So there are two types of tap changes. One category is called de-energized tap changer. So sometimes it's DTC is the abbreviation. Uh, but these are de-energized tap changers. That means you have to de-energize the transformer first before you make the tap changes. The second type is low tap changer. Sometimes just LTC. You might see like OLTC. So I'm just going to use LTC, low tap changer. So to change taps with a de-energized tap changer, transformer, the transformer must be de-energized first. And that has to be done manually. So there's like a, a handle that you have to kind of turn to make the change. You know, on these, you know, you might have like, you, uh, like a 5% voltage change. Uh, you can have like in steps of, 2.5%. In other words, each tap change is worth 2.5% of the rate of voltage, and you can have two above and two below. In other words, if the voltage, let's say, you know, 138 kV line to line voltage, then that's if this is the nominal, then if you change the tap one up, like one above, then you're going to change. Basically, you're going to do 2.5%, you know, above 138. If you change it one more time, yeah, you're going to do 5% above 138. In other words, 105% uh, of 138 kV. You can also go down the nominal then you have to subtract basically 2.5%. If you go another one, another tap change, a negative 5%. So you're going to go below the rate of voltage by that amount. So should never attempt to operate this tap changer, de-energized tap changer, while the transformer is energized. So if the transformer is under voltage, you should not change, uh, operate this tap, tap changer because one, you're going to damage the tap changer. You could cause damage to the transformer. You could, uh, and personnel too could be hurt. You know, someone can be severely hurt, you know, so it's, it's dangerous. Basically, you don't want to do that. Step one, you know, if you have the transformer, let's assume there's a breaker here. Step one is isolate the transformer. So open, open such that there is no flow just to make it simple let's say current is zero nothing is going through the transformer so and also voltage is zero on both on either side of the transformer so transformer transformer is completely out of the circuit out of service now ltcs have control that will change the taps automatically using current and voltage and because they you have a PT or power tra uh, a potential transformer voltage transformer that kind of steps the voltage down and the low tap changer has a voltage it has control uh, so it takes that voltage and also it has a you have a CT that steps the current down so it takes the two and obviously you have some settings you know because however you want to control the voltage, uh, sorry, control the tap change, you know. But it does that automatically. 
uh, you don't have to do that manually like a DNR drive tap changer. LTCs are capable of changing taps without interrupting load. Again, this is a separate topic, but these are just some considerations or some differences. So in other words, the tap changer has sensing, it has control that will change the taps based on the settings that you programmed without dropping load. So it does that while everything is, is loaded. In other words, if you take the transformer, again, the rest of the system, let's say there's a breaker here. So this is closed. This is closed. Uh, current is, is not zero. That means it's flowing. Voltage is also not zero. That means transformer is energized. The tap change, tap changer in this case will change the taps, you know, because the tap changer is designed for that purpose and there will be no damage, you know. In some countries, the low tap changer or LTC is located on the high side. In the United States, LTCs are typically located in the low voltage side like in distribution, you know, for instance, radial or step down, you step down from high voltage to low voltage. But obviously there are cases where it might be in the uh, high side, you know, because if you have, for instance, uh, uh, just as an example, 138 kV to 12 kV, this is delta, or a grounded Y, this is delta for whatever reason, or 34 delta, you know, even if this is not a good conne uh, connection, but that's not the topic here, but it makes sense to put the LTC on the side with the Y, because then you can put the low tap changer at the neutral point such that it requires less uh, insulation and so on, so clearance basically. Because if you put it on the delta, let's say this is 34 or 69 kV, because that's going to require a lot of insulation, clearance, face-to-face, face-to-ground, you know, tap-to-tap, -tap and so on and so forth. So that can be, so the tap changer would be huge, you know, because you have to, if you account for all, all the clearance. So it depends, but that's why I say typically is on the low voltage. So if the LTC is located on the high side, in this case, primary, again, you know, so there is, sometimes there, there can be confusion. Let's say you have a generator and you have a step generator step up transformer. So generator 20 kV is step, steps it up to 345 kV. In this case, this is the primary, but it's not the high side because the high side is the secondary in this case. If you have a step down transformer, like you take 138 kV, you step it down to 12 kV. In this case, so the primary happened to be the high side. So that's why, you know, so I'm assuming a step down in this case. So that's why the high side and primary happen to be the same. So while, so the tap changer would be, so if you have, this is the HV, LTC, LTC is on the high side, but it's regulating the low voltage or the secondary. So there could be scenarios in this case where you have variable flux. Because in theory, we want to operate the transformer with constant, with constant flux. That's the goal, because there are some issues with variable flux. But when you have the, high, the LTC on the high side, wireless control in low voltage, you could have scenarios with variable flux. So if the primary voltage is constant, then, so again, I'm gonna use this equation here, which is very famous. So primary voltage, this guy here is constant. It does not change. Then to increase low voltage, so if I want to increase the low voltage, because the tap changer is on the high side or the primary, I, this is constant because I don't have a tap changer on the low side or secondary side. 
So I have to vary the primary side. Sorry, this is a mess. So I have to vary this. So now I want to increase a low side voltage. That means I have to, in, to reduce or decrease primary uh, number of turns. So low voltage turns would be constant, you know, for this, for this equation. So now I increased low voltage. This is constant. This is constant. So I decreased this here. That means I changed the volts per turn, what's known as volts per turn, which will lead to high flux density. Again, So this here is variable now. So this equation, this is just a constant frequency. It does, in this case, it doesn't change. Cross-section area of the core doesn't change. So the only thing that will change relative to volts per turn is this flux density. So volts per turn, if it goes up, flux density will go up. If volts per turn go down, flux density will go up. So flux density is affected by volts per turn, as we see from this equation. If volts per turn is increased, like in this case, if this goes up, that means B will go up. And we know uh, silicon steel or coarse steel will saturate around 2.02 Tesla. <coughs> so the B is in Tesla, basically. So if I increased volts per turn, then there could be scenarios where the flux density could go up. And if this here reaches that 2.02, then you could reach saturation. And saturation will cause overheating. It will cause all kind of other issues. So that's one issue with having a low tap change on the primary side, high side, while regulating the low voltage side. So something you have to t think about, you know, because you don't want to have variable flux, which could lead to uh, saturation probably. So sound level or noise is affected by flux density. Now, again, volts per turn is changing. We know flux density depends on volts per turn. So if volts per turn go up, flux density will go up. Noise is also dependent on flux density. That means noise will increase. Sound level will increase with increasing volts per turn. So there is kind of a relationship here. Core loss is also affected by flux density. So that means if volts per turn increases, flux density will increase. That means core loss will increase as well. So core loss will increase with increase in flux density. Impedance is inverse, inversely proportional to the square of volts per turn. This is what I mean by that. In other words, the impedance of the transformer is proportional to one over volts per turn squared. So if volts per turn increases one over something that's increased in a you know that means impedance will go down significantly so if volts per turn is increased impedance will decrease so that's something you have to keep in mind because if impedance matters like parallel for paralleling and other things you want to keep that in mind the step voltage basically uh, if you have a, a low tap changer you're going to have, as you change the taps, you're going to have a step voltage between adjacent taps. So it would also be variable. So these are all things you have to take into account when you have a low tap changer, especially if it's on the primary side, high side, and <clears throat> while it's regulating the low voltage side or secondary side, because you're going to, you have to, make sure you check all the, these are the minimum you know you but basically you have to make sure that you're not going to have any adverse effect you know on the transformer operation thank you